is, okay, that is not what I'm saying. That is not what I am saying. I never said that. I would never say that. How dare you put those words in my mouth? Hey Gala fam, it's Rachel and Rhea and we're the Gala sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. Before we start this video, be forewarned, you, this video is not for the faint of heart and it's not for everyone. If you don't want to hear from a caregiver's perspective on being an autism parent, this video is not for you. Click off. In fact, leave the channel. Mm -hmm. Just, just bye. You don't need to be here. Walk out that door and say, you know what? This isn't for me. Exactly. And we're going to leave the comments open. However, the comments are heavily moderated. You cannot just say whatever you want down there. We have a bunch of buzzwords and keywords that are automatically... Um, held for review and we have moderators and we also watch the comments super closely so you cannot say whatever you want and if you sit there and you troll us in the comments your comment will be deleted and you will be banned mm -hmm. so before we get started please make sure you're following us on the social media scrolling below as well as linked in the description box down below. We also built our own website at www.thegalasisters.com with three different blogs. Yeah, there's kind of a fourth one on there, but there's three main ones. And we update it at least once a week. And if you'd like to stay involved and informed and you enjoy hearing what we have to say, then hit that big old subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. So with that, we'll take a look at the food that might be causing autism, not eugenics. No, so it's Autism Awareness Month or Acceptance Month or... It can be both. I, it's both. I don't though. understand the big deal of what's going on here. You guys are making everything into... You're like hoopla. And it really doesn't need to be this dramatic. So before I get started just like to and let our viewers be aware that there is a movement out on the internet about canceling autism parents. That is so wrong and so stupid and so disrespectful. And if you are a part of that movement, please leave our channel forever. I have a 15 year old daughter with autism. You can watch some other videos with her in them that she consented to be in. And we discuss what it's like to be caregivers and our thoughts on autism and Emma has been diagnosed with autism and a speech language disorder since she was five she's been in treatment since she was in three years old and I took off at least three years of my life to bring her consistently to therapy when she first started she couldn't even sit still for 20 seconds and she still cannot care for herself at all. She needs help in every aspect of her life. We love her dearly. She is an amazing human. She's wonderful and she's intelligent. She can do so much, but she's so vulnerable and she's so limited and she's so incredibly disabled. And you cannot deny that. And she woke up one night a few weeks ago crying. And, and she we called mommy and auntie. And she said that she wanted to be cured. She wanted to be more a part of our brand. And she wants to be able to talk better and sing better. And she just woke up and I'd never heard her say this before. I never brought up the word cure to her. I never told her that she needed to get better. I don't know where she got it from. We do know other adults with autism. We're not going to say who they are. So maybe she got something from there. I don't know. And I'm not mad about it if they did it. I mean, she's 
her own person in many ways. And so I made a tweet about wanting a cure for autism. And it went viral. And I got ripped to shreds. Don't you ever rip someone's kid to shreds. Do you understand? That is so wrong and so mean. And people who do that should probably lose their right to tweet. Absolutely they should. Now, it didn't just stop with, you're the worst mother ever. I got a lot of those and like people told me I should go die. People said the nastiest things for me. They were taking pictures of my tweets and putting them all over Reddit and publicly shaming me. Which is completely inappropriate. I mean... If you are a part of that, you need to stop. I've had my picture stolen and desecrated and, like, completely redone. And, I mean, it is so disgusting what people have done. I mean, these children, I'm assuming most of them are children, should not be allowed on the internet. This is absolutely horrific what you're doing. Um... You totally took what I said and you ran with it. Now, the tweet that I said, it said something like, we have a vaccine for COVID, so why can't we do much for autism? There is no cure for autism. There's barely a treatment for it. We don't understand what autism is. We don't know what causes it yet. There are studies that show that it is caused by both genetics and environmental factors and when I made that tweet talking about a cure in my head what I was thinking first of all there's no vaccine for autism it's not a virus you can't make a vaccine for it duh I didn't think I needed to say that because it's such an obvious thing it's but so appar- goddamn obvious. But apparently you people are so dumb that you read into things. We also had a little idiot people writing on our Facebook page, people writing in the comments. You do not do that or we will start start sending and slander lawsuits to you guys. Do you understand? What I was thinking of along the lines, we need to change our food. We know a lot of people like Mayor Eric Adams and we have other friends who have... Uh, Michael Dorn, who played war. Yes, who have cured their cancer by going vegan. And, you know, there's GMOs in our food. I mean, there's all sorts of antibiotics and there's pro processed cheese food, cheese stuff or whatever they call it. Not even real cheese. I mean, there are so many things on our shelves that aren't food. We put so many chemicals into our bodies that aren't safe. And yes, it is scientifically proven that breathing in bad air and putting all these toxic chemicals, lead and shit like that, into our bodies can cause our genetics to change because of evolution. Now, what else is caused by genetics? Um, I don't know, blindness, arthritis, uh, cancer, endometriosis, Mm -hmm. which we both have, cystic fibrosis. And I didn't even know what eugenics was. And everyone was like, that's eugenics. That's eugenics. You just want all the autistic people not to exist. And I'm like, that is, okay, that is not what I'm saying. That is not what I am saying. I never said that. I would never say that. How dare you put those words in my mouth. And that is disgusting. It is nasty. It is horrific. And it's you're the one with the problem. And that should be illegal. And then people went to my daughter's Twitter and they were like, I can tell you're autistic. You're stupid and your mom hates you. And people are saying that to her. And then they're like, "Um, well, I can say it because that's not actually your daughter's Twitter. It's yours. I'm like, you don't know that. You're just using that and saying that and assuming that because it justifies your hate because if it actually was Emma and it is her she's Mm -hmm. assisted in tweeting but those are her words we help her she asked for how to spell things she's actually a lot better at typing than she is at speaking and you have attacked her and she's so disgusting and she's scared she's scared and then you justify well I know it's not you're in my room you're in our apartment. You're watching. You're stalking us. That's really, oh my god. That's really fucking creepy. But I mean, also, if you were in here, you would know that that's not true. No. Yeah. So, guys out there, this is this is nasty. These anti. Uh, we also had a gentleman accuse Rachel of being like Gypsy Rose's mother, 
and said that Emma would be dead soon, which you do not say that. Absolutely not. You never say that. Ever. And if I, when I find you, you will be sued for that. Yep. You will be. Trust me. Mm -hmm. You're going to get sued. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. So you better get yourself a lawyer. Now, like I was saying earlier, I'd never heard the word eugenics before. I didn't know anything about it. So I looked it up and I found out that they're using eugenics to cure things that are also caused by genetics that we don't want, like cystic fibrosis and cancer, etc. And so well, let me just get this straight. You want to cancel eugenics, which would prevent people from being cured of deadly illnesses. So you only care about yourself. You don't care about anybody else. You know what? And also, your little vendetta is never going to stop that. I mean, we need to cure these diseases. And it rage people me. who have been cured of cancer, they're not like, well, I'm not I'm not me anymore. They're not they don't they're not like that. No. Yeah, I mean, look, I want you to I want you to think about this. Am I different because I'm going through menopause? Is that make me a different person? Honestly. Yes and no, you're kind of a dual person. You both the uh, that person who you were when you're younger is still inside of you, but now you're going through changes and now you're kind of a different person. Did you know that you lose all the cells in your body? They get reproduced and you are actually a completely different person throughout you your life? Yeah, many times. <laughs> yes. And life is about change and adaptation. And there's this video on Molly Burke's channel. And which we you should will, go check it's out. It's a two-parter. We'll link it down below. Where this woman was born blind, which is caused by genetics. And Just in case you didn't know that. She had never seen a day in her life. And she was happy. No, absolutely. She wasn't upset over being blind. That was how she always had been. But then at 36, she was given the opportunity to have a miracle surgery. Not God or anything like that, but science miracle. Created by scientists and doctors. Where they could do the surgery on her eyes and cure them. And she accepted the surgery, she got it, and now she can see. And she said that she doesn't consider herself a sighted person. She still considers herself a blind person. In fact, she's almost like a dual person. That blind person still lives in her, that's still part of who she is. She didn't lose who she was. She also had the choice. She did not have to take that cure. You always have a choice. If for some reason they come out with some cure for or, autism. No, or whatever else you may have. Endometriosis, um, arthritis, celiac disease, what you name it. Anything. You do not have to take it. That's a choice. Me. I am very, very, very nearsighted. I could go get LASIK anytime I want. I have chosen not to. Because I don't mind wearing glasses. But I have to wear my glasses. Or it would be illegal for me to drive. And me, despite the fact that I may look it, my glasses keep me from, you know, not being able to see. They keep me from having headaches, like constant headaches. They keep my eyes from, like, you know, peeling around them. Mm -hmm. It's the only cure there is. Exactly. And, and that's okay. It's okay to be disabled because it's not your choice. It's not your fault. Like, you know, if you have, you know, this... I mean, should the human body be able to do that, or is that really hard on your system? You guys are coming up with these ridiculous allegations that you didn't even say. And so you have ran so far with it, you sound like dorks. And somebody actually tweeted, multiple people said, we need to get rid of all autism parents, they're the worst. Well, then who's going to raise the autistic children? Are you? Because if you're a minor, you legally can't. I mean, no, you just don't want them to have any moms. Because anyone who would be their mom would be an autism mom. Wait, what? We were also put on a list for bad parents on Twitter. Please don't do that. Uh, you know, how immature can you be? What are you, five? Oh, I forgot. You probably are. Now, I want you to understand what a lot of autism parents do. We worry about our children. We watch them disappear in front of our eyes. Emma went from being able to speak full sentences to barely being able to say one word when she regressed because regression is a sign of autism. Emma's very first word, the first time around, was cracker. She thought a piece of toast was cracker. And she's my witness that this really did happen. I was there. 
And a lot of autistic children get so angry and so upset and have meltdowns for days and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And hours. It is actually proven that a lot of autistic parents, not parents with autism, but parents of autistic children, have PTSD similar to people who went to war because we get hit in the face. We Bridge have been hit in the face by Emma because mm -hmm. I know I have. We get bitten. Uh, we get scratched. The child often runs away and we can't keep up with them and it's terrifying. Some parents tragically, sadly, horribly lose their children because a lot of autistic children are at high risk of death, of drowning. And it just happened in our city last year. Um, Some little kid was over there with her parents and it was over. Yeah, over that it's way. Never, it's not the parents' fault. Don't you dare say that. I don't want to hear you say that. It is not the parents' fault because kids are fast, they're small, and it can happen in a blink of an eye. And it's it's so sad. And you don't understand how much love we have and how much we go through and how much we give to give our children a chance and we would do anything for our children and you're sitting there saying that you don't have a say in the autistic community because you're just a caregiver we don't need caregivers there's also a movement to cancel all behavioral therapy oh so you think it's okay when an autistic person gets their clothes wet and they're so upset over it that they strip naked and run through target which my daughter actually did or, yeah, I mean, and then that's a whole, and then there's whole other issues, like a lot of them don't like being bathed or, you know, toothbrush. Guess what happens when kids do not have the proper bathing and the proper teeth brushing? Guess what happens? I know. Do you? Mm. Social services gets involved. They're forced to go to the hospital and get cleaned. Mm -hmm. um, and look, we, you know, and, and anybody who doesn't like an autism parent, first of all, that's also the wrong thing to say. And they're like, well, we, you thought you're for Emma's abortion. We don't, Emma's abortion. No, Rachel, no. Somebody said that about you. I had the option to get an abortion. I chose not to. Didn't your in-laws want you to? Your yes. in-laws want you to? I chose not to, and I don't regret that decision. I'm glad Emma's here. I'm thankful she's here. I love her. And you guys just need to get this shit out of your mouths. Now, remember, autism has different stages. It has three different stages. And we'll talk about the different stages next week. Because like most um, disorders or illnesses or whatever, I know autism isn't technically an illness, but it's a spectrum disorder. Hey, Rich, I have a question. Does endometriosis come in multiple stages? Yes. Does it really? Uh-huh. I have stage one. And I have stage four. Mm-hmm. And... See? See? There's some people who fall more into like the Asperger's kind. And we'll can do all. function pretty well on their own, where someone like my child cannot, and she is on the lower functioning. And you guys don't use high functioning, lower functioning. You don't get to tell the professionals what language to use. And you all coming at me with, um, you know, don't hug your daughter. Me, me, me. You know, the professionals actually recommend deep pressure. And I'm not going to go by what some little punk on the internet tells me to do and gives me their recommendation. I'm going to go by what the doctors and therapists have recommended to me. I'm not going to go by what you say. And you can keep your little mouth shut, ears open, eyes on our channel if you're watching it, eyes on your mommy or whatever. But... I don't want to hear it. I don't care about your stupid parenting advice when I have been professionally trained by it. Now, there is no manual for raising an autistic child. Do not exist. And you seem to have this thing where, like, you have this manual. If you have a manual, you're going to be a millionaire. Did you know that? If you're like, just because you don't like something doesn't mean that someone else doesn't. And then Emma speaks for her mother, and then you guys tried to cancel her as well. And you said... You don't get a choice. Your mom is just bad. I know I love her. No, you don't. You don't get to. Do not tell her what to do. Do you want me to tell you what to do? The only one trying to speak for her is you. It's your fault. All your fault.
You don't know her. She's never spoken to you, and she never will, because I will never, ever let any one of you near her. No, because you guys are violent and creepy. Do you think that you are doing anything to help yourselves? Are you presenting yourselves in a good manner? Are you presenting yourselves in a calm manner? Are you presenting yourself in a way that people will want to listen to you? No, you're not. You're acting like a mob, a gang of bullies, and people don't like that. Adults, we don't like that. We see that as a problem. And if you really want to cancel the caregivers, then you need to act like a girl. Though. You see? It mm -hmm. works. It's a two-way street. And if you act like a caregiver, then if you want me to go away, then you're going to have to take care of yourself. And I'll, you can make all your meals for yourself. And you can <laughs> figure out how to live. Because I don't think a lot of you would live very long. No, I don't think so. You know, and you guys have to understand, too, that a lot of autistic parents are also disabled. A lot of them are. Rachel and I are no exceptions. And you guys are just like, no, 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 I want to go. That's what you sound like to me. According to your logic, you say that you wouldn't be you if you didn't have autism. Okay, I hear you. So what you're saying is if you get a new diagnosis of cancer or... Endometriosis mm -hmm. or, you know probably EDS or arthritis or you get your appendix taken out because you had appendicitis or you get pregnant and your body changes that you're also no longer you <laughs> or that if you're old and not young anymore you're no longer you because your self-identity has changed <laughs> that's a very actually cruel thing to say because you're taking a crap on all the people with new diagnoses and having a new diagnosis can be very difficult, it can be very jarring, and I know it's not easy to get I cured. I mean, look at somebody like Jessica Kelgren Fossard. Like, that's a really good example. We'll have to link her channel, too. She didn't even know that she had EDS, Ellis Amos Syndrome, until she was older. She did not know that. No. She was misdiagnosed, and she didn't get her diagnosis until just a few years ago, and she's not, what is she, she's got to be about this, got to be close in age to you and I. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. so you kids know, Rachel and I, our, I'm 37 and she's 36. And you guys are calling us kids. I know. I, uh, what? I'm not a kid. I am not a kid. I'm sorry. Absolutely not. I graduated from high school in 2003. So I'm not a kid. Mm -hmm. And you graduated in 04. Are we kids? No. Our Twitter accounts are probably older than most of you. I know. And you guys just sound like a pack of idiots. A pack and of you're like, we're going to go ratio you. Okay, first of all, I don't care if you ratio me. Maybe you young kids, that's like a big deal with you. But to me, I'm like, okay, I don't care. What? That doesn't mean anything to me. Like, whoop de fucking do. Like, okay, what? What? And I also heard from a kid that he had a ba he had a block. People always who blocked him. Honey, that's kind of stupid. That's not really an achievement, is it? No. It's not. That sounds like, that sounds like a, I'll just call it a bro-douche contest, because you're not old enough to understand what that means, but that sounds like a bro-douche contest. Like, yeah. I can do, hey, bro, I can do 50 push-ups. Well, I can do 70. That's what you sound like to me. If I want to identify as a caregiver, I can, because not a single one of you get to tell me what to do or how to run my life. And also, I'm going to tell you this right now. Emma has three social workers who work with her regularly. Our home gets inspected every single year because Emma has disability insurance. And in order to keep her disability insurance, we have to prove that she's okay. She also has a massive team of professionals who help her regularly and she has an IEP she sees a therapist I mean she's got a speech therapist an occupational therapist a music therapist mm -hmm. I mean she's got so much help don't you think if there really was a problem that they would notice um, they're not gonna nobody's gonna listen to some you know crazy people on the internet who are screaming about how much they hate me because of one tweet I mean, hello, you guys should go watch our video on Jim Jordan. If you really need someone who is absolutely <laughs> bonkers and who really thinks that we should get rid of all disabled people 
in the way that you're talking about, then you should go talk to Jim Jordan, not to me. And the guys are like, well, you don't, you don't like autistic children. Well, that's not true. That's not true. I mean, some of the people in this world, and I'm not going to name any of them, who Rachel and I truly believe that are on the spectrum. We've been trying to be very careful what I say here. Those people are the greatest influences in this world. And oh. Did you know that Albert Einstein was allegedly on the spectrum? And every morning he would go into work to do his job. And what would he say? Um, excuse me, I, mean, I don't speak German, so I can't do it in German. But excuse me, um, I don't know where my office is. Could somebody help me? And they'd take him to his office. And then it happened again. And then take him to his office. And then it happened again the next day. You see? If you need extra help... That's okay. It's okay to need extra help. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. Sometimes, you know what? You know what? You guys want no secret. I can't put on my own eyelashes. She has to do it. It's true. And I'm not afraid to say, "Hey, hey sissy, I need some help." Or if I have a problem with my lipstick and I can't figure, I can't see as well as Rachel can. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind helping. It is not a burden to me because I am not a selfish person. And you can't judge someone based on one tweet. You can't do that one or two tweets. Like, And there are entire Twitters out there dedicated to me now. That's embarrassing. Like, what? I must be very important. Cool. It is. My sister is very important. And, you know, like, you guys got to understand that you're acting like we're some alien species and even if we were an alien species that based on their kid would it really matter no and you put words in my mouth too that i never said that i absolutely never said once again we didn't even know what eugenics was i thought that the ultimate treatment for autism that could really help people would be something that you apply to everyone <laughs> I didn't think it'd be something that you, like, you gotta go down to the clinic and get poked and prodded for. I didn't, that's not even what I was thinking about at all. No. Look at, like, Deep Space Nine. Really good example. There's a couple of episodes. There's one called with Dr. Bashir, I presume, where he, where his family kind of explains, like, what happened to him. It's very jarring because the same guy that played, played Raj's dad in Big Bang Theory also plays his dad, and I can't get past that fact. I was last. Yep. And there's that other one, too, where, like, these other, these people who were, like, genetically modified met with Dr. Bashir, and they were still the same old people they were. They were still stimming in a corner. They were still quiet as a church mouse. They were still, like, very flirtatious. They were still very excited over mundane things. Mm hmm Exactly. And you guys, you need to not want to cancel your parents because... I mean, every single person gets mad at their mom and their moms or dads or mom and dads or whoever you live with at some point in time. Everybody does. I did. I hated my parents when I was a kid. I really did. But you know what? Now I love my parents. But I get to brag about Emma. She can tell time. She can do math. She can read. She can write in both uppercase and lowercase. She can spell most words. When she walks into her classroom, she runs the place. She lets her teachers know what's up. And she helps her fellow students because she is an amazing person. And she's better than every single one of you because she has two parents. I know her sisters, but she's a parent too, who believe in her and love her and will never, ever, ever, ever give up on her. And I've had people try and I never will, no matter how much you want me to. You guys, allegations are not evidence. And I want you guys to know that you guys could report this to the police department. And unfortunately, it wouldn't go anywhere because it'd go to the school first. They also haven't done anything wrong. And they would just laugh at you. If yeah. I was the person on the phone, I'd be like, you know, blah, blah, Edina Police, because we live in Edina. Hi, my name is Rhea, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about some autistic child. Oh, um, how old is she? Um, I don't know. What's her real name? Oh, I don't know. Oh, where does she live? I don't know. I did, just did you witness? Did you witness any of this? No, I, I just saw a tweet. I just saw a tweet. Twitter? Uh, yeah, you should do something about that. We don't investigate tweets here. We don't. That's what they're going to tell you. They yeah. don't invest. The police department doesn't investigate tweets. No, absolutely not. They don't do that. Mm -mm. And the reason why they don't do that is because they don't have the ability. 
Yeah. But we do think there needs to be more cyber police. There absolutely needs to be because a lot of these people who attacked us do not belong on social media, at least not without an adult. And it's atrocious that their parents are allowing them on there. Mm -hmm. And that's not okay. We don't, you know, Rachel and I, everybody parents differently. Mom shaming is a real thing. And I need you guys to be aware of this. When you bring evidence to a judge hearsay not admissible in a court no i'm not a lawyer but i'm mentored by lawyers lots of lawyers you can see interviews with lawyers on this channel you can there's yep. two i can think of at least two lawyers that are on this channel i can too and without evidence you're barking into the void exactly and now a lot of comments we got to were well mom and aunt must be autistic First of all, we don't use that as an insult, ever. We don't call people autistic as an insult. That's not okay. Second of all, we've been tested and we're not. You want to know what we have? I'll tell you what I have if she tells you what, what. Okay, so I have endometriosis, fibromyalgia, celiac disease. You ready for this? Let's see. Gastroparesis. Um, photophobia, light set, which I have what's called a sun sick. I have mast cell activation disorder, which gives me allergens. I can't have dairy. Um, I am visually impaired. Uh, let's see. I probably have EDS. And I think I might have, I think I may have POTS and we're working on getting towards getting tested for those things. Mm -hmm. Rachel. I have endometriosis. I had surgery to get it diagnosed. No, you didn't. You did not get to know the name of my surgeon. I have horrible TMJ. You'll hear me hear me crack my uh, jaw sometimes when we're live because I have to relieve the pressure. Um, I have chronic pain. I have uh, fibromyalgia. I now that I've hit perimenopause, I get chronic migraines. And I also have PTSD. We both have PTSD. Mm -hmm. I have gastroparesis and I have depression, but it is managed. Yep. And anxiety. Mm -hmm. We both do. Mm -hmm. I have celiac disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not, you know, what you call neurotypical or whatever you want to say. Because our lives are not easy. And we're a strong team. And we have a lot of people who help us. Your concern is unfounded. We do not need it. It's absolutely ridiculous. We're entitled to our viewpoint. And you are not here to be the viewpoint police. That's absolutely ridiculous. Someone actually tagged the situation to a doctor for Emma having apraxia of speech. Emma was actually evaluated for apraxia of speech and does not have it. They thought she did for a long time and then I brought her to a real specialist here in the Twin Cities in Minnesota and he ran some tests and discovered that it was autism and a speech language disorder. Now, what a lot of people have been saying about us is that we're a couple. Okay, well, we're not a couple. That's you, Siblings, they're not couples. That's disgusting. Second of all, even if we were, it would be okay if we weren't siblings. Like, it's okay to be a gay couple. And because gayness is not a crime and it's not a sin and it's not a defect. Now, what a lot of people have been saying is, you, oh, man, autistic gay people, those are the worst. A lot of people have tweeted us and said that. That is never okay. Do you understand me? A lot of you guys have alleged that we adopted Emma, too. I don't know where you got that from. And you're exploiting her on the internet. No, we're not. She consented. She likes being on the internet. You know what Emma does with the other videos she's in? She watches them and claps for them. Yeah? She loves it. Emma is in love with our channel. And you cannot shut up caregivers. Shutting up caregivers should be a crime. It's very, very bad. We matter. Our voices matter. And, like, if you watch 911, the TV show, mm -hmm. uh, 
there's a caregiver in there who's caring for her mother while she's dying and she loves her mother and she did not regret caring for her mother but she became a caregiver and that was like all she was for a long time and then when her mom died she kind of lost herself mm -hmm. because that was her entire identity yeah and you guys don't understand how much we love doing it and we will do it as long as we need to but you also don't understand how hard it is and you don't want to hear how hard it is because you want to hear no dear everything's totally fine sunshine and rainbows and that's just not reality we don't do things like this do you understand me if you do something like this to enough people eventually you're gonna get caught and eventually you're probably gonna get in trouble so Twitter please stop this madness please do not allow people to act like this this is how bullies act our whole entire family has been dragged into this you know and just one more thing Rachel knows who Emma's dad is. They were married for 10 years. And I did speak to him about your behavior and how you were acting, and he is horrified by what you've done. And he's mad. Mm-hmm. And it is not okay. Her dad is still a part of her life. Mm-hmm. And why do you guys have... You guys have just making stuff up at this point. You sound like you just, like... You're just like, okay, well... A little pack of loons. If you want to... <laughs> That's all you sound to me. That's all you sound. If you want people to listen to you, you are not acting in a manner that will uh, make people believe you and listen to you. And, you know, it's not a crime to want a better life for your kids. It's not a crime. No, it's not. When Rachel and I went through our domestic violences, each of us went through one, our parents were excited that we wanted a different life. And our parents are in their 70s. And when I got divorced... It wasn't easy. Yep. I went through a period of time where I felt like I would never be okay again, that I had lost myself. And over time, and with a therapist and with the support of my sister, we got through it together. And now we realize that it's a great thing. Life is about adaptation. There's going to be things in your life that you're not going to like. You're going to go through changes that are actually really good for you that you're not going to like at first. And you will learn that it's actually okay. Don't beat yourself up because you can't do something. You know, there are things I know I could never do. And one of them is I can't be, I can't carry kids. I don't have that ability. It's taken away from me because my body just, just, just doesn't work that way. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. And you know, someday I hope that you guys too sit down and you realize, you know what? I do have a problem. It's okay that I didn't get a service dog. That's another thing too. Emma is devastated over the loss of her service dog and we're working on getting her another one. But that takes time. And Some of you guys are jealous she's already had one. I know, I had people say, she didn't get another one because I never had one. I'm sorry that you didn't get one. I really am. I wish that you had. But no, you do not get to say that Emma doesn't get another one because you never got one. That's not how this works. No. How this works is we're all going to be kind, gentle to each other. We're going to be nice to everybody. And we're not going to cancel people because we don't understand. A lot of people could have just said, I don't understand this. Could you explain that to me more? I had one, one person tweet us and say, what do you mean by cure? And I'm like, I just mean like offer healthy food. I don't mean taking people and experimenting on them and being evil to them. No, that's what the... That's not what I'm that's talking what about. The, that's what happened to the Jews. When, and if people are saying that to you and they want to do that to you and your parents do that to you, I am so sorry that that happened to you. I really am. But I'm not one of those. And don't be like, you remind me of my mom, so you suck. <laughs> if I remind you of someone, I'm not that person. I'm me. You guys have to stop and you need to slow down and you need to stop trolling our family. Yes, we are a family. I know it's weird. It's two sisters and their, well, daughter, I guess. What you're doing is actually discrimination and what you're doing is actually ableism. Mm -hmm. And you're calling us the ableists. No, we're the disabled. Did you know that? Remember, next time someone insults you, 
you don't know their backstory. You don't know their back history. And our channel is actually here to help defend people and love people and pick guys, up people who and you guys need have, help. And you guys have made a mockery out of it, and that is not okay. Well, I mean, if you need help someday, I won't help you now. No, no, no. This channel will not be here for you specifically. Autism is never going to be make you normal. It's not. Normal is just a setting on the driver dryer. Why would you want to be normal? Either? I certainly don't want to be. Guys, I love have you unique. ever have you ever looked at our hair? I love being unique. You ever looked at our hair? Do we look like normal people? Or our nails? Do we look normal to you? No. I mean, I love the WWE. That's what I think people are like. Oh my god, they love the WWE and they love Andrew Cuomo. Oh, they're so terrible. Oh, oh, run them out of town. Oh, Lord, look at the weirdos. They're different. Oh. Did you guys notice that? Mm. What are those? Mm. What are those? You tell me. What are those? What are those? <laughs> All right. You can never steal our joy. You will never break up this family. And this channel's not going anywhere. Sorry. And that's a fact. So, we are going to end the video here. Sorry, it was very ranty and ravey and kind of all over the place, but, you know, we had to say our piece. And that's why we made this channel, so we could always say our piece. If you like this video, do us a big favorite. Give us the biggest thumbs up you possibly can. You know, the down button, the down thumb doesn't do anything anymore. YouTube changed it. Smash the subscribe button down below, guys. Let's get this channel to 10,000, okay? Let's do that, because, you know, this channel needs to be a 10,000, so we can help anyone we could possibly help. And you know, at some point I would like to start a nonprofit to help people get the care they deserve. Watch the video at the end, watch it, watch it, watch it, you know you want to see it. Give that bell a big ring to indicate that you don't want to miss a moment of what's here. Generally we post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also go live on Sunday nights. Who knows what that would was I going to divulge into? But again, please keep your comments tasteful when we're there on Saturday night or Sunday night, or whatever night we decide to go live. <sighs> Why are you on Tuesday? Haha, <laughs> now you can. We have a podcast entitled Gab with Gal Sisters, a podcast on movies and TV. You could also hear from us on the Thursdays before the weekends that there are WWE pay-per-views because we have a podcast entitled The Gala Sisters Presents Miss Directly Chris. Hey, and guess what? Emma specially requested that we make her merch. So she's actually got two shirts. Yes, she does. So if you want to support Emma, then please go buy her shirts. She does a little happy dance every time somebody buys them. It just makes her excited. She enjoys it. And again, we have her permission. She loves it. And she's 15. She's allowed to do that if she wants. So support our work, rep our brand. And I know this is kind of a hard thing to hear about, but this is the reality what we've been going through. And we're not going to address the haters any more than this. I mean, this is it. We, But we have, we have every right to defend ourselves. And when there's an injustice committed against someone and lies said, we're going to speak up on it and donate to the channel. You can buy us a coffee. You can send us money over PayPal and all of that goes towards just keeping the lights on and towards keeping this channel going and of course towards Emma's care. I mean, that's where it goes. We're not super um, material people. That's what we do with it. And you don't have to though. You're under no obligation whatsoever to give us any money at all. You know, that's a personal choice. We'll never make anyone feel guilty for not doing so. And just remember, this is a two-woman team. On top of being awesome caregivers for Emma, we do everything ourselves. We are hard workers and we're clean and dry. So we spend all day, every day working hard and 
editing and just literally doing everything. And we have some moderators that help moderate, but the grunt work is done by us. So thank you so much for listening to this video. We hope that it cleared some things up. We hope that you do not believe the lies spread about us and that the people saying them finally shut your damn mouths. But thank you so much for joining us. We will talk to you again soon. Love and share. Bye. bye.